Welcome to Southwest Florida Real Estate Update, hosted by area realtor Jim York and York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. Our show will bring you the most up-to-date information about the local real estate market featuring leading experts in the real estate field. Good afternoon and welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. I'm Michael York with the York Real Estate Group and I'm joined today by our host Jim York and his guest David Wilkinson, Department Head for the Collier County Growth Management Division. Thank you for the introduction, Michael. Well, Dave, thank you for coming to our show today. Why don't you just little, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, Jim, thank you very much for inviting me. I really do appreciate it. I'm a fourth generation Floridian. I grew up here in Collier County, a uh, Naples High School graduate and a University of Florida graduate. And I worked over 30 years in the private sector as an engineering consultant here in Southwest Florida. And about seven months ago, I became the head of the growth management department at Collier County. Well, that's good. And what is the job of the growth management uh, of Collier County? i be honest with you, I don't know myself. <laughs> it's the growth management department was a merger of two former divisions, the transportation division and the development review division. Mm -hmm. And so back kind of right after the the downturn in the economy, it really made a lot of sense to merge the two together because they do have a lot to do with one another. And so the county merged the two together and we have about 500 people. We have a budget of around $150 million. And I like to say that we do everything from airports to zoning, kind of everything in between. We, we handle transportation, road maintenance, coastal zone management, stormwater management. We handle long range and short range planning and we handle building plan review and inspections and and development review of, of every size development and anything that requires a building permit that comes into Collier County. Interesting. Now for our <coughs> viewers so they understand you're, you're for Collier County and then there is one for the city of Naples, right? That's correct. Here, here in Collier County we do have three other municipalities. Mm -hmm. We have the city of Naples and they have their own development review and road maintenance staff. Right. And then we have the city of Marco Island. Right. And then we also have the uh, town of Everglades City. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, a big question that I get here in being in real estate is that how many people are moving into Collier County a year? Well, the, the, the University of Florida estimates that uh, <laughs> we have about 2% population growth, which would equate to around 7,000 people a year and that's Collier County and that would not include the city of Naples or the other municipalities. So what we see in our units that we have permitted this last year of 2015, we permitted almost 3,000 single family and multifamily units and, and we kind of equate that to around 2.4 people per unit. So that's around in the 6,000 to 7,000 person range. And do they project uh, from the study going out because I've heard things like up to 2030 or whatever do you have those statistics uh, where, where the growth is coming or y going yes, to be yes we do and and what we do is that the university of florida predicts out probably in about a five five year span and in what we look at really in conjunction with an organization called the metropolitan planning organization we project out really to 25 years so we've projected out to 2040 and we use the 2040 expected population really to plan our transportation network improvements for 25 years. Okay, for 25 years, okay. And um, how are we gonna accommodate all the growth here? I mean, that's, I think, I hear this every day. You, you know what I mean? That that's, that's a very good question, so. Jim. And, and what we do annually, we do something called an annual update and inventory report. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is we take a look at all of the infrastructure in the county, including roads, stormwater, libraries, jails, really all the infrastructure and services within the county. And we take those population growth estimates and we project out and we look at the capacity of our infrastructure. Okay. And we make sure that that meets the adopted level of service standards of Collier County, which are adopted by our board of county commissioners. Mm -hmm. And, and we look at that and, and if something does not meet that standard, then we plan to improve the network or the system to meet that. 
And for instance, let's, let's take a roadway segment because right. that's probably that's what most people are interested that's in. That's right, it's exactly the truth. So, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll take the existing traffic that we mm -hmm. get from traffic counts and we'll project the growth by looking at the developments that have been approved kind of in that area. Right. And we look at that and we, we take those two and add them together and if they exceed the level of a service standard, then we start to plan roadway improvements either in a parallel corridor, roadway improvements to that particular segment, intersection improvements. Mm -hmm. And so we, we take and do that on an annual basis so that we can do our absolute best to accommodate the growth. And how, um, like coming from Laley or Marco into town, you know, down the Fifth Avenue, it's very congested. and and going out of Mockley Road is going c congested. How can the public or people find out what is your plan for those areas without, I guess, calling you on the phone? Well, I think one, one thing to do is to go on the, uh, the website of the Metropolitan Planning Organization. Okay. And what that is is each county has an MPO. They have them in every county and every state across the United States. Mm -hmm. They are federally funded and uh, kind of mandated organization and what they do is they plan roadway improvements like I said for 25 years okay and what you'll see is a 2040 long-range transportation plan and it shows the projects that are planned within that 25 year span to accommodate the growth that we expect okay but like a Mockley Road I right. mean, for instance US 41 is a state road right so that's really up to the state Florida Department of Transportation okay but a Mockley Road, for instance, good good example. Mm -hmm. um, we just actually our last commission meeting approved a the Board of County Commissioners approved an intersection improvement for a Mockley Road and Collier Boulevard, which is probably our, one of our busiest intersections mm -hmm. right. there. So that's a roadway improvement to add capacity for the intersection to be able to get more people on the Collier Boulevard right. quicker. And then also to get access to a new emergency room that Naples Community Hospital That's right. has constructed right there. right there around the quarry in Heritage Bay. And then some of the other things that we're doing is that we are looking at other roadway segments that would assist Mockley Road, such as an extension of Vanderbilt Beach Road. Mm -hmm. uh, we're currently widening Golden Gate Boulevard and we'll be widening another section of that. And then also constructing some bridges out in the estates to kind of help with the interconnectivity of the roads out right. there to give people options. That's right. Because that's what it's really about is giving them other options mm -hmm. to be able to get from the, point A to point B. To leave B. the big traffic areas. Right. 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 I know I live in the Strand and um, and when, I don't know if you've ever been there. but I play tennis there two nights okay. a week. So when you go out of there at night, you know, it's a nightmare because sometimes the traffic's all the way backed up to our gate. Right. You know, because they probably didn't anticipate all the people in the Strand, the shopping center, plus all the people that work in those buildings, commercial buildings there. So right. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at ways to, you know, to relieve that and to find parallel corridors to relieve some of that right. heavy traffic at areas like that. Dave, we're going to take a little short break, and we're going to be right back in one minute after you hear about the York team. Thinking of buying a home located in a golf course community in the Naples, Marco, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Here is what Mark Lai, former PGA winner, says about Realtor Michael York of the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. Hi, I'm Mark Lai. If you have any real estate needs in Naples, Florida, the one company to contact is the York Real Estate Group. Also, if you want a golf course property to invest in, Michael York of the York Real Estate Group is the guy to contact. Michael knows every golf course in Naples. I will tell you this, he's been in the golf business for a long time. He's played all the great golf courses down here and he is an outstanding realtor. I've known him for quite some time and he's an honest, he's got a lot of integrity and he very much knows his stuff on all the different clubs here in Naples. So the York Real Estate Group is a great place to start. So if you have any time or anybody that wants to visit down here in Naples and, and uh, look at the options out there, please contact the York Real Estate Group. Welcome back. Uh, Dave, let's, let's talk maybe about uh, impact fees. Where do you see those going or how do, you, how do 
people don't even know what impact fees are. Maybe explain that first. Okay, you know, impact fees are part of the cost of really accommodating new development. Mm -hmm. that, that, and the theory is that new development will play for the impact that it causes upon the infrastructure of the county or city, wherever it might be. And impact fees are, are calculated mostly based on the cost of labor, materials, uh, and cost of land, for instance. Mm -hmm. For instance, if for a, a parks impact fee, we have a parks impact fee, both regional and community. And that has a lot to do with the cost of land because Collier County is going to build a new park and obviously they have to acquire land to well, do that. That's right. Or fire houses, right? Fire, exactly. A new fire station, station. a new EMS station, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You know, roadway improvements, the, the ability to widen roads. So it's really based upon the construction costs of those things. And the decision really whether or not to raise the fees is really up to our Board of County Commissioners. And we do have an impact fee study that occurs about every three years that looks at our impact fees related to the cost uh -oh. of constructing all of these improvements to accommodate this growth. And, and the consultants typically in that study will recommend, you know, either the impact fees are increased uh -huh. or as they did during the downturn, they decreased. And for our viewers, just so they understand, an impact fee is something that any new construction built in Collier County would have a uh, fee put onto that construction property to accommodate this. That, that's correct. Right. They are residential and commercial impact fees. Fees, mm -hmm. because people don't realize that, that uh, really it's a cost that the builder absorbs that passes that, on that's exactly to the right. consumer. Right. And folks who build homes themselves, say out in Golden Gate Estates, mm -hmm. um, and, and they maybe do it owner builder, right. then they see that and they see that fee that they have to pay. Right. Um, okay, well, what's, uh, you, we were talking during the break here about new growth trends. What, what do you see in that? Well, one of the things that, that we see that um, we, we kind of expected is that we had our first application for the repositioning or the redevelopment of a golf course. Mm -hmm. And we, we foresaw that as a coming trend. Um, golf kind of hit its peak in playing time. and. and the early 2000s, really, mm -hmm. and, and we do have a lot of golf courses in Collier County. That's right, we do. And as land becomes more scarce in the urban area, as you can see, you know, most, you don't see a lot of available land. No. That people are going to start looking at land that is available. So we do have an application in to redevelop a golf course into a residential development. Oh, you do? We do, and I think that uh, we're going to see more. And in fact, our, our Board of County Commissioners directed our staff to, to look at this and look kind of around what's going on in the rest of the United States and come back with some recommendations as to how we handle this. Mm -hmm. well, you don't have uh, uh, any plans on a public course for people when they come down here because I hear this in real estate uh, that, you know, they're all private and the fees are high and it's, there's really no real public courses in, in our county. You don't have anything in the right uh, No, sir, not the county. It does not have a, any plans to build a, a public course. I thought uh, yeah. maybe within a park it would be nice, you know. Uh, right. Because um, it takes about 150 acres somewhere Yeah, but you could do even a smaller right. scale one, you, you know, that could be nice to have a, for the family, you know, to take your kids out to play. Because where do you really, it's hard for somebody right. that's, uh, I understand. you know, we're big golfers in our family, so that's uh, one thing. Do uh, you understand? How are you, how you going to control the growth um, in uh, Naples or not, or to Collier County? Because it's, you know, I read in the paper the Minto Group's building a community out 10,000 homes. Uh, how the, how uh, that is That is correct. You know, we, we control the growth by planning. It really mm -hmm. all begins with the, the appropriate planning. Right. And the Collier County does have a growth management plan that I think we were talking about it during the, the break. Right. That really kind of sets aside the areas that are commercial, that are residential, and then even the transition between the commercial and the residential, that you transition maybe from commercial to multifamily to residential. And we have a future land use map that, that sets aside all those. And so one of the things that we're doing is we have four 
master plans that we're working on within the county right now. They were part of our growth management plan. And they are the uh, rural fringe mixed use district, which is an area kind of between the urban line, which kind of is Collier Boulevard, mm -hmm. is kind of the urban line, right. just east of that. And then the rural lands, which is where Mentos new community rural lands west is going to be located, right. and where Ave Maria is located. Mm -hmm. Then we have the Golden Gate area master plan, which includes Golden Gate City and Golden Gate Estates. And then we have the Immokalee area master plan. And our commissioners ask us to begin to update those. And we've actually begun, we're working on the rural fringe first, and then we'll move to Golden Gate City or Golden Gate area master plan then the rural lands plan, and then Immokalee. And so, you know, those through really the appropriate planning and looking at everything, mm -hmm. all the infrastructure and, and the growth patterns, you know, through the appropriate planning, we hope to, you know, accommodate the growth as best we can and preserve the quality of life we have here. And, um, you know, maybe people don't think about this, but I, I just wanted to bring it up. In Immokalee, we have a lot of agriculture out there, That's true. Um, which I think is good, you know, it's good for our economy, it's good for the yes. country, it's good for the state. Is that going to go by the wayside uh, um, in the future or not? I, somebody was telling me from really one of the news stations that I do business with um, that uh, the Immokalee Airport, they were thinking or planning on importing goods from Cuba agriculture because it's a good distribution spot. Uh, is that true? That is not? true. It, we do have a foreign trade zone at the Immokalee Airport also, mm -hmm. so it's easier kind of to bring in things from, right. from out of the United States. But I, I think in regards to your question about agriculture, what I've noticed over my career when I was in the private sector, I did a lot of work for the ag industry, and I, and I noticed it becoming more efficient over the years and they could grow and produce more on with, with less That's, really okay less water less fertilizer yes. pesticides and with less land mm -hmm. and i think that's what you're going to see is without a doubt that some of the growth that we're going to have out in the east is going to occupy some of the farmland that's out there but it's going to be replaced with more efficient farms who can right. produce more okay dave we're going to take another little short break and we're going to be back in one minute again with a little commercial about the York Group again. Thank you. Thinking of buying or selling a home in Naples, Marco, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Think of the most experienced York Real Estate Group associated with the number one brokerage in Naples, Downing Fry Realty, which produced $1.9 billion in sales in 2014, controlling 43% of all transactions in Naples. Jim, Michael, and Morgan York make up the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty. With over 250 million in sales transactions, they can offer you the expertise and trust you want and need in a Realtor. Call them today at 239-273-6727 or visit their website, www.naplesyorkrealestate.com. Welcome back. Uh, Dave, let's, uh, during the break here, we are talking about green spaces. So why don't you just talk a little, a little elaborate about that, how you're controlling that with our county. Okay, that, that's a very good question, Jim. One of the things that, that we do require within Collier County through our land development code is a preservation of native vegetation. We have certain percentage standards for commercial or residential development and open space. And, and I think they're strict standards. And one of the things that we think kind of separates us from other areas is the fact that you can drive through Naples or you can look at an aerial photograph or you can fly over and you will see a lot of green. And I think it's very important and I think it, it really kind of helps us kind of maintain that small town feel. Right. And, it, and it really, like I said, separates us from a lot of other areas. It's really true because I've flown over it uh, with a friend of mine that has a plane, but I've also taken helicopters through. And, and it, it, until you get up there, you really just don't understand how much there is a lot of green space. Because when we're down here, we think everything's just built. Right. But there's right. a lot of land available. You, it's, it's really it really is. Amazing. And the, and the nice part of it is it's part of the developments and, and it's part of the preservation standards. So. It's, it's there. When you do, a, uh, this might be a, another question I wanted to ask you, was when you're doing planning for a new development or an older development, 
uh, you have a landscape plan that you require yes, so sir. many trees or certain kind of trees. When uh, when um, a, a new an older community is redoing it because it's 20 years old and it's you know the trees are outgrown or outgrown or whatever, w how do you approach that? Well, or how does the community approach that? The the community, uh, if they're changing their community or they're building something new, mm -hmm. only that part they would really have to bring up to current standards, really. Okay. But if they, uh, and, and that's one of the great things, we have so many great communities here in town. We that, do. That, that they, they have a great palette of landscaping, typically. And if they want to update and want to come to see us for some assistance, we're happy to provide that because we have several landscape architects on staff that would be happy to work with them, Th they kind would. of steer them in the right direction mm -hmm. of what they would like to do. In, uh, in at what capacity? Would they help draw it or just? Uh, Probably more in the way of, of recommendation of plant palettes, mm -hmm. you know, what's appropriate for different areas. I okay. think we can help in that regard. Okay. Okay, and then uh, the last question I wanted to ask is, there's been a lot of talk about, you know, uh, maybe sometime having a bypass around Naples because uh, I was a lot of people are asking me this question because you know like Ave Maria's way out there right. and Minto's going out there and I'm sure there's other big uh, you know building companies that are going to be doing developments out there. Is there any plans on that or? Uh, the, the, the state Florida Department of Transportation is looking throughout the state and they have a project called Future Corridors. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they're looking at is just like you said, was something that for a while was called the Heartlands Parkway and it would actually go kind of from southwest Florida up through the center of the state up to kind of the Orlando area. Okay. And, and it and had been looked at and one of the things they're doing is a what they call a planning development and environmental study of looking at the expansion of State Road 29. That's what I heard, right. Which runs up from Everglades City, from 41 up through Immokalee, and mm -hmm. then up through LaBelle, up to State Road 27. Right. And that would kind of be possibly the corridor. So it is something that they're looking at, not necessarily as a bypass around Naples, but as a future corridor to accommodate traffic to go from Southwest Florida up, up into to Central Florida. Yeah, because I thought at one time there was one they were talking about coming from North Na North Fort Myers or something around picking uh, up uh, Route 29 or whatever. Right, uh, right. Uh, to leave some of the traffic uh, there. So they're looking at that and it, mm -hmm. it really looks at all modes of transportation really. And where can people, is there websites that they can go to? And maybe you could mention some of the websites. Without we, a doubt. Uh, uh, our website is colliergov.net, mm -hmm. and, and you can find our department, the Growth Management Department, uh, on that website, and there are many of our master plans and things associated with all the different departments and divisions that we have. And then the Metropolitan Planning Organization is a good website, and they have the, the 2040 Long Range Transportation Plan we mm -hmm. talked about, which focuses on Collier County. Mm -hmm. And then the state, you have the Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, and they have many studies and many maps and things associated with transportation all throughout our state. Well, Dave, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and I know our viewers are, and I know a lot of the realtors that we send this show out to are going to be appreciative of you coming on, and uh, I hope maybe next year you come on again and give us a little update. I'd be happy. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.